you have any questions, just let us know. All right, so today, first off, here's the upcoming Fit Fridays with Fiscals. But today we're gonna to talk about the requisition approval workflows. So starting on the meetings and trainings page, where you registered, you can find the PowerPoint that we'll be demonstrating today. I'm not gonna go through the PowerPoint, but I'm gonna actually show you the stuff in the live instance. So today's PowerPoint, you can find right here. And then after the session, the recording will be right there or right here. All right, so sorry, I was letting people in. All right, so there is no balancing when you're uh, starting to work on the USAS requisition approval um, workflows because it didn't exist in uh, Classic. So there's no uh, balancing, no running of the reports between two systems. It's just easy setup steps. Now, first we're gonna um, start on the technical document, doc, documentation page, and it shows you the workflow installation guide. This part, I'm not gonna be like going over because that's more technical and maybe more of your technical staff, but down below, apologize for, scrolling there's there is post install procedures but you can also find these in our wiki under the appendix now you see this but that's just going to explain like the menu options just like these do we're going to be going to the appendix page and later talk about what's under there so under the appendix, there is workflow procedures that when you click on it, it's gonna give you the same um, setup as this did. So we're starting here with the system modules and that's where we're, we're starting here. All right, so we're gonna show you how, let me go back one screen, how to set up to use the workflow in USAS, how to submit and how to approve. And I'll also show you how to recall and reject a requisition. So after you get those post uh, technical steps completed, you'll want to go navigate to the system modules and there is a workflow module that you'll want to initiate right now it's showing it that i have it installed you'll also want to verify that this is installed because you'll be sending notifications of the workflow status to users and the file transfer notification services. I'm not sure why that's not checked, but we'll just leave that there. And then the HTTP notification services. Once you have those all installed, you'll want to refresh the page. And then the menu items will show. Mine were already stalled, so I'm just pretending. After that's installed, you'll wanna to go to the system configuration page. And under, you have to scroll um, under the workflow configuration. This is um, where you'll put your UL, URL in the box. And right now it's only, we only have requisition approval um, for that configuration. So that must be check marked. And that adds um, even more menu options 
like the approval audit trail to the requisition page. And then the email configuration. So that you'd be able, so that the district is able to um, receive approvals um, via email. You'll also want to go to the requisition approval configuration. And this is, this allows the user or the district to customize the emails and the approval dates and how that date or how that due date is determined. So first off, we do have a little help thing. I'm not sure if it's, um, it's talking about the variables, but this due date, there are a couple options here. First, we can do blank with no due date. And this will, when you submit a requisition, into the workflow, like the secretary submits it to the principal, there will be no due date marked on the workflow approval status. If you choose a not this option, X number of days after submission, you see that you get more options popping up. So the options with the number of days this is the days after a submission. Here it is entered five. And what this means is five days after the requisition is submitted, it'll show due. And um, when it's due, when the, I'm gonna use that example of the secretary submitting it to the principal. So when the principal logs in and sees that he has requisitions to approve, when it's five days after the submission, it'll be um, alerted to the user in red. It'll be highlighted in red as a warning that it's due, as well as putting that due date on it. This next one is days before the due date before it's yellow. So, for example, if I submit a requisition today, it's July 15th. I don't know where July went, but it's July 15th. If I, going on this schedule, five days after would be next Wednesday. So by next Wednesday, it's gonna be showing on the principal screen as red. But two days, say we are working Sunday, It'll be, um, oh, I'm sorry. So it's due the 20th on Monday, it'll be yellow. Two days before the due date, it'll alert the principal with a yellow highlight. And I'll give you an example of that in a moment. And these are customizable. You can, the district, district can put in whatever they want. And then down below, Oh, let me talk about the last option, the last day of the posting period. And again, some of these options change. So this last day of the posting period, um, let me pull up that calendar again. So the last day of the calendar is the 31st. So two days before the due date is gonna be July 34. 31st and two days before July 29th, it'll be highlighted in yellow. So that's what those options mean. And then these email options are also customizable. So I'm going to scroll down because they're all kinds, but here, the approvals process start email. So when the secretary submits, the requisition into the workflow process, the, an email will go out and it'll populate the rec number and say requisition one, two, three has been submitted for approval. Now this part 
is custom, anything you can add whatever you want. This is what I added. This indicates that it's just begun. Please wait until you have a PO number. But the district can put whatever they want. So that email is customized for the start. And then you'll see later, as I explain, there's other people in the chain. And some of these are like for that requisition one, two, three has been approved by the principal or the user's name. This one's um, this one, this email is customization that will go to the principal. Requisition one, two, three requires your approval, and then you can add and customize your message. And again, here's a rejection customizable email. And finally, all approved. And then my customized message was soon we'll notify you of the PO number. So the district really has a lot of options here to make it their own. Any questions on that? There were uh, email, I believe I left the email um, examples in the PowerPoint, but again, it's gonna sit, reflect like what we just went over, just with the name of the user. All right, so let's see, I'm looking over my notes. You also want to take a look at the under system workflow integration, just to test the connection after you have and you can see mine successful. Now we can begin to define like the groups that we're gonna use and the group chains. Keep in mind that I'm um, admin user so that I have the ability to show you everything, but I'll point out the differences <clears throat> of what users can see and what um, ITC and admin users can see. <clears throat> All right, so a group is found, the creation of groups and group chains is found under the system menu. And a group is um, a, the person or the group of people that the requisition is gonna flow to. And that flow is the group chain. So it's gonna go from group A to group B and that process is the group chain. So a group can include one or more users. You can see here that the treasure, there's only one treasure and one purchasing manager, but oftentimes you have several principals. So for instance, for you might have two high schools. So you might have two principals and two assistants. And so you can have up to as many users as you want, but so you can have one or more. Um, let's look at one. So looking at the high school principal or assistant that I set up, what this is saying, I named my group, and this is just a tip to put, let me go back to that grid. You see this function and or or. So when I'm setting this up, you have that option of and or or. And what this is saying is, well, first you name your group, you can put a description and you can put that or here or there. Right now, we only have the workflow type of requisition approval. And then this next stop and or or. You're gonna pick your users that are available and put them over to the selected. So I believe Brad and Alice are principals and Alan and Christina are assistants. And this is saying that um, Alice 
or Alan or Brad or Christina can approve for this group. When you have an and with more than one user, like the principal and assistant, Brad has to approve for that group and Christina. So both the principal and assistant. And that's why I found it helpful to put it in the description or the name. But you don't have to because they're customizable. All right, so on the grid, you can see the type, the name and what you had set up. You, and what we looked at were, was similar. This is what, when you create, it's what we were looking at, but populated. And right now, this isn't anything, because right now the only workflow that we have is requisition. So just choose that. So now that we have our group set up, we got to take these groups and define how the requisition is going to flow between these groups. So for instance, the secretary submits it to <clears throat> the principal. And then the principal submits it to the treasurer for whatever your chain is going to be. So let's look at the examples under group chains. <laughs> And please ask if you have any questions. All right. So looking at this, we do have similar icons, view, edit, and delete. You can only delete if it's not attached to a transaction. The group type. is requisition approval, which is the only type we have. The number of groups um, included in the chain, let's look at athletics, there's three groups. And then this column shows false. And that is because groups can, or group chains can be archived. So let's look at athletics and I'll make it darker. This is where, if you want to archive the record, and then it'll be archived. Sorry. OK, so actually, since I've been talking about high school, let's look at the high school. You can see that my group chain, I set up high school. I didn't put a description, but you can, this and that. The available groups are over here and you move them over to the selected. And um, you have to think of the process because it's the order that you select is gonna be the order, excuse me, that it's gonna go through. So in this case, the requisition is going from the secretary to the high school principal or assistant, one or the other can approve. Then it's going to go to the purchasing manager, and there's only one user, and it's the second order in the, in the flow. Um, the next one is assistant treasurer, and again, there's only one user. And then finally, the treasurer. So that's the flow if the secretary submits a requisition to the high school group chain. And similarly, there's different ones that you can set up. You can set up the transportation one, for instance, which I don't have here. All right, so to do this, again, I'm the admin user. And admin or sysmin user, which is the ITC level access, can create groups and group chains as well as assign groups on users. So we'll talk about roles in a minute for further detail. 
but let's go look at a user and we'll look at the secretary, Doug. So Doug Barrett is my secretary at the junior high. Um, he has rec, UCS rec access, but down here is the selectable group chains. So what this is telling me, and you can see that it's just like any other grid or selectable grids or whatever you want to call it. But here it's saying that Doug can submit to the custodial group chain, the food service, high school, high school science, and the treasurer group. He cannot submit to the purchasing department or the cafeteria. Um, if he has account filters attached to, or if a user has an account filter, as long as the account filter gives the user read-only access, they shall be able to approve the requisition with that account number. All right, so let's, there's no questions on that. That's how you assign the group chain that Doug can submit to on the user. Let's look at some roles. These are also defined in the documentation. We did have an update from yesterday afternoon until this morning on, let's see if I can find the page just to make it easier for you guys. And I'll, I'll end up or I'll show you what I changed to. It's this that I updated, which we'll get in a minute. Just so you know, it's page 14. And it's, it's uploaded to that registration page correctly now. And what I had before was just a permission and I updated it with the whole role, with that permission under the role, so. Neither was wrong, but it made more sense. Okay, so we're on under system roles. To approve a requisition, you don't need any extra permissions if you have USAS rec or greater. So the users like Doug that had USAS rec, he can create a requisition, he can submit a requisition and approve a requisition. But sometimes you have um, users who don't enter requisitions, like maybe the, like Alan, the principal, or the athletic director, they might have secretaries that do the requisitions. So even though the principal or the athletic director um, do not need permissions to create a rec, they do need permissions to approve. So they, they don't necessarily need that USAS rec. So I set up a new uh, role called requisition approval. And I notice here, I, for my own benefit, this, the description, this role can change accounts because it has these uh, permissions, the update permission, which is, what we have here. It's just telling me that this principal or athletic director, when he's getting ready to approve the requisition and sees that it is for salaries and it should be for purchase services, he can go ahead and change it and then submit approval for that requisition. However, sometimes you don't, or the district doesn't want that power to change the account number. So in that case, I added this role above and I put cannot update accounts. So the only difference is this update <clears throat> permission is 
is not on the role that cannot update um, accounts. That might be like maybe the head science teacher or something. They might be able to prove it, but you might not want to give access to the rights to change the account number. So again, um, the admin or the sysmin user can create the groups and the chains and assign the chains on the user. But I also created this USAS group um, role. And this permission will allow non-admin users to create groups and chains. This permission will not allow you to um, assign a group chain to a user. So for instance, Oh, I forget who my oh I made it easy. So my USAS group user has that permission. And I'll show you. I log in, in as USAS group user. Oops. Had the wrong password. So this user, you can see, um, can create these, but has no access to users. That's usually like a um, ITC level access. So going back to the admin permission um, and the roles, we have one more role called USAS user profile. Let's click on that. And this is what I updated in the PowerPoint. I updated it to be this the name of the role whereas before it had that permission in the PowerPoint. And it's this permission or this role with that permission that can never be assigned to the users with admin or sysmin user roles. Um, administrator access will be automatically granted access to set up groups and group chains or assign users. So they don't need this limited update uh, permission to limit them on creating or updating the user. It's like contradictory. So never put this role or permission onto an admin user, but you can set this up on a user um, to update to um, assign onto, assign groups onto users. We have the workflow admin. And again, this has the permission of being able to set up groups and then having that access, admin access to update users and edit users. And then we have this role that I set up, workflow bypass. That can be added like to maybe a treasurer or the assistant treasurer. This can be handy, for example, like when the secretary submitted the requisition for a field trip, which happens to be today, but the lead teacher is on vacation or somebody in that group chain isn't gonna be in today, so they can't approve it, but that's what's gonna stop the requisition approval process. So with that bypass role, and I'll show you an example in a moment, they can 
bypass the rest of the chain and get that requisition approved so that it can be in that approved status. And then it can be converted to the purchase order and everybody's happy because the field trip happens. So I mentioned the status, trying to get that requisition into the approved status so that it can be a PO. So let me talk a little bit about the statuses of requisitions. There are five statuses that you can see on a requisition. Now, I normally this column doesn't come up, but with this more button, I pulled it in. This is one of the ways that you can see the um, workflow approval status. I'll show you uh, other ways in a moment. So the pending stage on the Toledo Zoo requisition means that it has not been submitted for approval. So the secretary hasn't clicked on that or picked the group chain. So those would be the pending ones. In progress, like the gray home bus, in progress indicates the requisition has been submitted for approval but is awaiting more approval somewhere in the group chain. And approved, approved requisitions like this one, but not converted, can be now converted to a purchase order. This one has been converted with a PO, but when you get ready to approve, of course, you want the approved or getting ready to convert, you want the approved non-converted ones. And if I, let's see if I can find a rejected one. Okay, a rejected uh, requisition status is one that was rejected for, um, rejected by a user. You do have um, the ability to enter a, let me pull up a fresh one. You can enter a code for the rejected. So let's say, already picked one that was rejected. Okay. This, oh, that's not submitted. Gordon's, okay. So, I'm confusing myself because I'm jumping ahead. But anyway, when you, I'll show you how to reject one in a moment. And just know that when you do, you can enter a predetermined reason or customize the reason. So that reason goes back to the original person that entered the requisition, like the secretary. And another status is this canceled status. Canceled statuses um, indicate that the original creator of the requisition recalled the requisition. So Doug, the secretary, realized, oh gosh, I put two P or two requisitions in for the same item. I need to recall the second one so I could delete it and not, not have it continue through the chain just so the treasurer can say this is a duplicate. So the original requisition or submitter can recall their own requisitions. And by recalling it too, so say, Here's a good example, I think, too. So Doug has this one, and we're going into FY23. He might want to recall this one so he can update it so it's FY23, not FY22 dues. And then once 
Doug recalls it, he also has the ability to resubmit it. So besides looking at the statuses here, you can also um, view the status in the middle of the requisition. This one's approved. And you can also see like where it is in the chain. And, and, and I just simply viewed the rec. So I'm viewing the, the requisition. Here's the middle and then this tab up here tells me that Doug submitted it. Fran is the treasurer. And she, um, it looks like she chose one of the predetermined reasons and I'll show you that in a moment. They resubmitted it to the treasurer and then the treasurer approved. So you can also see the status on this tab. So there's a couple ways of seeing the status. So, how does users see or know when there's um, requisitions ready to be approved? I'm gonna log in as Fran, who is the treasurer. And you can see on this homepage, this is the red lines. I don't have any yellow lines that I talked about earlier. So these are the, requisitions that are due or past due. I had a yellow one that would mean it's coming due. So you can view what, um, view the requisition and approve or reject right here. And notice as a treasurer, she has that ability to update the account number. Like maybe that principal with that role as. You also can find, besides the home screen and it's showing right here, this menu option and requisition approval. You can see what's due. And again, you can approve right here on this grid. Um, I'm going to go back to the admin user because there are additional menus that admin and sysmin or workman admin users see. And I want to show you that before we get into some examples. So with the admin role, this menu option has the workflow admin menu. This will show you um, all I have a question in the chat. Can a requisition be recalled once in progress or the approved status? The requisition can be recalled by the original requisitioner up until the point it is approved. or I believe it's converted, actually. Let me check on whether it's approved or converted. I made a note and I'll get back with you. So this, the, when you're an admin user, Um, this is the grid that you can see, and this will show you all the requisitions that are in the process with some details, like who is, you know, the assignee. They also have this approval bypass menu option. This indicates um, requisitions that you have the ability to bypass and approve. So even though this requisition might be sitting there to be um, approved by like the science principal or, or the science teacher or the principal of the high school, 
but they're out, the bypass role can give that user the ability to just approve that. So I am going to view this. Sorry, my mouse isn't working. Thank you. Amanda did find that uh, clarification that when a requisition is recalled, it can be recalled up to any point before it's converted to a purchase order. So even if it's approved, it can still be um, taken back and resubmitted back to the treasurer. And you're very welcome. That was a good question. Okay, so I'm gonna log in as Fran the treasurer again. And Maybe it's in the bypass. I'm looking for a particular. Okay. So I'm logged in as the treasurer. I look at this um, requisition and I see, in my opinion, it should include a, a quote. So I'm going to reject it. The treasurer, Fran, is going to reject it. Here's the predetermined. Um, reasons that you can select and it'll populate. But you can also customize whatever you need. Please attach. So now that goes back to Doug where he can attach it and resubmit it. So let me, I hope this isn't getting too confusing going back and forth, but now I am Doug, the secretary, he logs in and he sees that his this one was rejected. So he can edit that requisition, add the attachment. I just have a blank um, quote just for demonstrations. Add the file, save the requisition. Oops. Submit it again for approval. Sorry, I should not be coming up. And I'm just gonna send it to the treasure group chain. And so now that one will have the attachment. Okay. And I just got to my note that um, as Doug, let me find this. This Blue Ridge Gymnasium is in progress. So I, as Doug, has already submitted it for approval. You can see that? Oh, shoot. That's already a. Oh, but in the chain, there's a, a couple groups. So it's still in progress, but Doug. I want to recall it. So by viewing it, um, I can recall, and now it changes to cancel. However, I can go back in 
And as long as it's not, here's my note, as long as it's not been converted, it can be recalled at any point. So you can update it for whatever reason and then resubmit it if you need to. And just to show you that a record is also um, noted on that approval audit trail. So, and so then if Doug, since I'm already logged in, I might as well submit it for approval. And then looking at that again, it'll show that status too. And it shows which chain it's uh, got submitted to. You can see that it got switched because of my memory. But that's okay because it, it documents it. All right, so now since all the requisitions are approved or have been sent out, the emails have been sent out, we're at the point where maybe the AP secretary is ready to uh, turn these requisitions into purchase orders. Let me go back to the admin user. Uh, the user can go to the requisition grid and sort there. Remember I brought in that status. So if I wanted to pull in all the approved, converted, false, I would have the requisitions ready to be um, converted. I can pull a report this way. Um, I can also use this advanced query. And if I set it up, I can also um, use it later. So I'm gonna pull this up instead of creating one because this is what I created. So, and it's the same thing as down here. Converted equals false, workflow status equals approved. But instead of maybe doing all this, I just come here, drop it down, apply my query and get my results. I can print a grid or report of the grid results. I also, if you noticed, um, added another query approved recs with attachments. This can be handy whether you have a workflow approval process or not, because right now the, the attachments stay with the requisition. The attachments will flow through the group chains too. So the high school secretary or, or the high school principal and the purchasing manager will see that uh, attachment. But for the person getting ready to convert and to know which requisitions has attachments, I added one more field up here to be the file name not empty to be true, so not null. And once I hit apply, there's my requisitions that have attachments. And you can see, I believe it was this one that I attached the quote to earlier. Well, maybe it wasn't that one, but we did. So then you know that these nine uh, purchase or, or requisitions has attachments. So besides the grid and advanced query, um, you can also find or customize the requisition detail report. And you can bring this workflow approval status over to the grid. And set it to um, 
select the properties to equal to be approved. And then you can also add the sum of the total of all the approved requisitions and create a report. So on this converted equals false. You can even set up a query here and go back to that. So as you know, reports are um, customizable. The only other reports that we have are the group chain reports. And you see this include archived, um, which include these two at the bottom that are archived or not, and you can generate the report. This is what this report looks like. So the group chain of cafeteria has the purchasing manager approving it and the treasurer. This one has the custodial manager, the high school or the assistant purchasing. However, we had um, an ITC create some reports that we put out in the public USAS library that I find to be um, very helpful. And that's why we put them out there. So you can click on that. We added them at the bottom. Sorry for the scroll. And just like these up here, it gives you the JSON file, the description, and then example. So for example, the approved requisition detail report. This will give you the report that will look like this. The group and group chains. So this has the group chain, the type, the group name, and the function and or or. It gets even better because this one as the groups, the group chains with the users. So the athletic goes, the athletic director, who is Jay or Justin, because their group is or, so either Jay or Justin can approve it for the athletic group. The high school principal or assistant is um, Brad, Alan, Christina, or Alice. So you can see, I like this report. You can see everything there. And then we have one more, the workflow user listing report. So again, Alan's the principal. You can see the groups that are, um, the group chains that he can submit to. So those are available for everybody. And how, where's my training? And to do that, you would take that JSON file, download it, and then under the report manager, you would import I'm not sure where it went, but you would find it. Always happens when you're on the spot. But anyway, you would import it and I probably have it here. So then you would have it at your fingertips. You can click it as a favorite. It would show on your home page. So that's requisition workflows. Um, this has been in progress for almost a year. It was um, went live last September. So I don't know how many districts are using this, but they, there are several and successful. Does anybody have any questions or would like to see anything? Just real quick again, Pat, when it's in an approval, like I had our district um, who was 
I don't think they realized it. They're fairly new to all of this, to changing the code. I think the secretary forgot to put the account code on there, but the approver can do that, correct? If I have them set up, like for this district, the uh, treasurer and the assistant treasurer have the approval um, to it where it allows uh, the changing of the accounts. Yeah, that one. Yeah. The one that has those. Yeah. So if they have that exactly, and I confirmed ours and they do, that when they go in to approve those up in the workflow, they can click on the eyeball and they have the opportunity to change the code at that time, correct? Before they final approve it. Yep. Let me go. I know I have a user requisition. Thanks, Thanks Pat. Oh, you're welcome. Because I also put it like on the title. <laughs> so if I, I'm trying to think if I have any for Alan or Brad. So let me log in as Alan or Brad. Ah. Okay, I'll find one because I know I have one and we have time. Okay, so let's set one up. <laughs> so, acquisition, Alan, okay. So my secretary, Doug, is gonna submit a Do the Toledo Zoo. So high school group. Okay. So now I'm Brad, the principal or assistant principal in that chain. And this is on his home screen that he can see it, or he can go here. Same kind of view. I want to view it to get to the account numbers. But then he can pick whatever he needs. And then just hit approve. So the secret, I guess, it probably wouldn't work if you click that little box that was down here and then click approve. You had to view it to change the account number and then approve if that helps. Any other questions? Or if I can run through any examples? Okay. Well, we'll have this recording out there on the trainings and registration page. I hope everybody has a great weekend and thank you for joining. Have a great day.